Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 13, our final episode with Sherman Leader, the 2017 Tactical World War II combat game from Danvers and Games. It all comes down to this. We've got a lot of work to do and a bunch of German units to take out. When we last left, we had wiped out their tanks and we were chasing them across the battlefield. But there's a 50% chance these armored cars could turn around and catch us in the open. This could go a lot of different ways. Let's jump in and see if we can seal the deal. Here's a quick reminder at what's at stake at this battle. We've currently got 16 points in our campaign, which gives us a good evaluation. To get a great evaluation, we have to wipe out this small tank force. To do that, we have to finish off at least three of the armored cars that are left here. And that's what leaves us. If we can do that, we'd get three victory points, which would give us 19 points and a great evaluation for the campaign. Here's a quick overview of the battle. With three turns left, we've been able to knock out the four German tanks at the front edge of the city. That caused the armored cars and the half-tracks to turn around and return in a kind of retreat back into this top part of the city here. With three turns left, in order for us to destroy the number of units we have to destroy, in order to be able to count the battalion as destroyed, we're going to have to push forward and press on because there's a 50% chance they stay, these German units stay up here. There's a 50% chance, however, they come back here and re-engage, which would catch us in the open. But that's a risk we're going to have to take. Here's a quick review of our combatants that are in this battle. Sergeant Wagner with his rifle team. He has one tactics counter that we'll probably use very soon. Sergeant Kelly with his rifle team. Sergeant Hart with his mortar team. They are now in range of the German unit, so they'll start firing this turn. And Sergeant Myers with his jumbo with the cracked hull. He also has a tactics counter that we'll be using very shortly to push, press our advantage and rush forward. All right, so let's start out. We're going to have Sergeant Myers and Sergeant Wagner expend their tactics counters to be able to move in the first half of the turn, allowing them to then subsequently uh, act in the second half of the turn as well. We'll have Sergeant Myers move forward in his jumbo up here, and then we'll have Sergeant Wagner move forward in his with his infantry team up here into the open. I think we have to go here rather than here because depending upon how the Germans would advance, they could avoid Sergeant Wagner by advancing here. So it makes more sense, even though it's riskier, to be in the open because we need to rush the possibilities that Sergeant Wagner's unit can engage with the enemy. So uh, now the big move, let's see what happens with uh, the axis, the German movement here. Let's roll for German movement. A five, uh, we did not want that. That makes it a tactical movement is a four. Advance to cover, the armored cars are going to advance back on us and they'll all get shots at our jumbo in the open. Ah, uh, that's a tough roll for us. All right, let's get started. Fingers crossed we can make it through this. We're gonna have our first armored car move up into this position here. This is advanced to cover. It will fire on the jumbo. Normally it needs fives to hit because it's moves. It needs sixes or greater to hit. Seven and a three, we get one hit. Sergeant Myers needs, he's in the open. He needs a three or less to negate it. This is Four. Oh, our first damage hit on Sergeant Myers Jumbo. No, fingers crossed here. Get glancing. Okay, I gotta look that one up. Okay, glancing isn't too bad. This counter goes onto the tank. Apparently it leaves a scar. And when a commander starts a battle in this tank, it adds one stress to him. So that won't impact us in this battle or in the campaign because this is our last battle. All right, let's go to our next armored car. The advance continues. This one also needs sixes or better to hit. It gets two shots. Seven and an eight. Oh, goodness. Two hits on Sergeant Myers' jumbo. Needs threes or less to negate them. Ah, six and a six. We're going to have to pull two damage chits. Ah, dice chit gods guard us now. What do we got? No effect on one of them. Excellent. Let's see what the next one pulls up. Fingers crossed again. Commander wounded. Okay, so Sergeant Myers is wounded. That doesn't impact him. It just means if he gets another wounded, he's dead. So we're hanging in there. Let's go to our next armored car. Moves up. It as well fires. It needs sixes or better to hit. How about some misses here? Ten and a four. Okay, we got one miss. How about a negation? We need a three or less to negate it. Nine. Got to pull another damage chit. This is like our nightmare scenario where that we pull forward and just they turn around and reverse in advance. This is the thing I was afraid of. 
One stress, okay. <laughs> Myers has zero stress, so he picks up his first stress because he was relieved of stress. So we add a stress counter to him. And let's do the last armored car here. This one will move up into the field as well. This one into the building as well, and we'll fire. It needs sixes or better to hit. Gets two shots. Let's get some misses here. Ten and a six. Good lord. Two hits. Come on, Sergeant Myers. Three or less to negate them. Let's get some luck here. Three and an eight. So we negate one of them. We have to pick one more damage counter. This would be the last attack because the half tracks won't shoot on him. Come on, fingers crossed. Let's make it. What do we got? Gun. Okay. Gun means that the unit cannot attack at range 2 plus. So that shouldn't impact us now that everything is all piled up on each other. So we made it through the four armored car attacks. A lot of damage, but Sergeant Meyer's tank has survived. Let's go on now and work to the half tracks up here. The half tracks have moved to adjacent cover, which really could allow us to move them up here. But we've taken the determination that when we have these ambiguous orders, we're going to move them to the advantage of the, the Germans just to kind of make it a little bit harder. So we're going to take this armored uh, half track up here. We'll pull one of them here and one of them here. So this one will move here and fire at Sergeant Wagner's rifle team in the open here. So it normally needs a five to hit on infantry targets, but because it moved, it needs sixes or greater. Let's get some luck here. Three and a nine. Okay, so one hit on fire pours into Sergeant Wagner's rifle team. As they charge across the field here. Sergeant Wagner's rifle team has a defense of four or less. We need four or less to negate it. Nine. Oh. Okay. Sergeant Myers pulls a damage chit. This is this is how I think you, you lose these games is when you just take a lot of firing. So immobile. Immobile means, I assume, that it can't move here. Let me just double check. Immobile. Place a counter on the unit card during the unit's next time to act. You may either choose to have it not move and return this counter to the cup or have it move and the commander suffer one stress. So we would we choose to suffer... Yeah, okay. So we would probably have it suffer the stress given that we're at the end of the battle here. We're going to move forward and take that probably. But we'll figure out that when it comes to our turn. Let's go now to our last half track. So we'll drop that on Sergeant Wagner. Let's take our last half track. We'll move this one just to move something different. We'll move it over here. It also will fire on Sergeant Wagner's rifle team, so it needs sixes or greater to hit. Let's get some misses here. With a six, oh, one hit. Okay, Sergeant Wagner needs a four or less to negate it. Eight. I don't think we got any successful negation rolls there. Last. This will be the last damage chit for this turn. Let's do this. What do we get? Uh, another immobile. I don't know how those stack. I assume they mean the same thing. Maybe you suffer two stress. I think I think there's been errata posted where you say you, that the effects are cumulative. That was an eight, by the way. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that means we're going to have double stre two, two stress on it. We'll figure that out in a second. All righty. Let's see if we can get some retribution here. We're going to have Sergeant Hart with his uh, mortar team fire on the armored car that's up here in the city. Sergeant Hart normally needs a six to hit at range two. It's a seven, but at anything greater, greater than range uh, one or greater, he adds two to his dice rolls because he's a good shot. So that means he needs fives or better to hit two shots. One and a nine. We get one hit. The armored car has a defense of two. It needs a four or less to negate it because of the bonus city bonus. Let's get this kill. Ten. Yes. Excellent. An armored car goes down. We need two more kills to wipe out the battalion. All right, let's have uh, Sergeant Kelly. We'll move up here into the, the train here. He can't attack armored units at range one, so he cannot attack. His turn is done. Sergeant Wagner's decision is interesting. I think we have to move him and take the stress. And by reading the rules, it does look like I think these counters stack. So when he moves, he was immobilized twice. If we move him, he's going to suffer two stress. And Sergeant Wagner's also cautious, so he can't move and attack in the same turn. But we need to get him out of the open field, and we need to get him to in a position where he can attack next turn. We have to pay that price. We're going to move him up here where there's three potential targets. And we're going to remove both of those immobile counters for, from him now, which that's my understanding. I don't think they stay on you if you move. It looks like it's a one-time effect. And his stress goes from two to four which means that he only needs one more stress point to go into the shaken category. Last but not least, we have Sergeant Myers in his badly damaged jumbo. His hull's, hurt, his hull's cracked, his gun is damaged, he's wounded. 
and he's also suffered uh, some stress here from the attack so he's got a glancing mark on the tank this jumbo has just got battered coming across this field he's gonna now he's gonna move forward here actually and let's move him up here into the city here the reason I want to do this, we want to get him out of the field, so he's got a little bit of a deep, better defensive positioning. And also, in the invasion scenario, when our units are in the same hex as the enemy, we get an extra attack die. So that's we're going to work to our advantage here, even with the movement penalty. Okay, so Sergeant Myers is in there, and he's going to go after one of these armored cars. He normally needs a 6 to attack to hit successfully. However, He's moved, so he needs sevens or better. However, because he's in the same hex, he gets that back, so he needs sixes or better. And he's a good shot, so he gets plus two to his rolls at zero, so he needs fours or better to hit, and we get three attacks on this armored car. Here's the first two. Nine and a seven, excellent, good shooting. We get one more, a seven, three hits. Sergeant Meyer, obviously very angry, is getting trying to get revenge. Now, the armored car needs twos or better normally, fours or less to survive, anything more, and we've taken it out. Ten and a nine. Oh, Sergeant Myers doesn't mess around. I mean, there's just no option for failure there. Sergeant Myers knocks out the armored car. Now, this battalion is down to strength six. We need to get it to four or less to consider it eliminated. So we all we need to do now is to wipe out, survive the next attacks and wipe out one of these armored cars or two half-tracks. Let's go to turn five. Let's roll for German movement. Three. So a three minus one is a two. Cautious advance, a cautious advance and a hold. That means I think that all our German units won't be moving. We'll check it out as we examine their options for attack. All right, let's take care of these attacks. The armored car will start by firing on Sergeant uh, Meyer's jumbo here. Normally it needs fives, but because it's in the same square, it gets its movement bonus point is back. So it needs fours or greater to hit. Two shots. Five and a five. Ugh, that's a bad start for us. Two hits. Sergeant Meyer's badly damaged tank needs, normally needs a three, but now it's in high terrain, so it needs fives or less to negate them. Let's get some luck here. Oh, yes. One and a four. Both hits bounce harmlessly off the tank. Sergeant Myers has su survived the first armored car unit's attack. The second armored car will attack from range one, which means that it doesn't get that movement bonus back for being in the same hex. So it needs fives or greater straight up to hit two shots. Five and a ten. Oh, once again, two hits. Sergeant Myers needs fives or less to negate. Let's get some luck here. Ah, oh, five and a nine. So he negates one of them, but one of them gets through. This will probably be, depending on how this goes, this could be once again the last damage chit applied to this tank if we can get a kill in this same turn. Sergeant Zebra did not have good luck here. Let's see if Sergeant Myers can pick out some better luck. Machine gun, excellent. That means, let me just double check here to make sure I get it right. The unit cannot attack at range zero, bugger. That, well, that doesn't matter too much. He can fire at the armored car over here. So the only range the tank can attack at now is range one. So <laughs> there's not much left of the, the jumbo here. Next up, the half track will have uh, Sergeant Wagner's unit. He's in the same hex. Normally, half tracks have a movement penalty of minus two. So we get that bonus back, which means it's plus two. So instead of needing fives or greater to hit, it needs threes or greater to hit. Oh. A, two hits on Sergeant Wagner's rifle team. Sergeant Wagner needs his defensive four, so this is actually pretty good. In the high city, he needs sixes or less to negate them. Let's get two misses. Eight and an eight. Oh, bloody hell. Two damage chits to Sergeant Wagner's rifle team. Hang in there, Sergeant Wagner. Exposed. Exposed means there's a bonus added to shots in the next turn on the unit. So that's too bad and suppressed i think it means we get causes stress if we fire we'll sort that out as we get closer to his turn if he's still alive of course all right the last half track to attack same thing it will go after sergeant wagner's experienced rifle team because that's the easiest thing it has to hit needs five to hit because it's one hex away no bonuses or anything like that it will fire two shots and then a two okay one hit gets through Sergeant Myers needs a six or less to negate it. Fingers crossed. Five. Excellent. Does not do any damage to Sergeant Wagner's rifle team. It's our turn to see if we can finish this battalion off. 
All right, so let's get down to it here. We need to knock out one of these armored cars to end the scenario, end the campaign with a great evaluation. Let's see if Sergeant Hart can do the honors for us. Firing his mortars. Now, our Jumbo can't attack the armored car in the same hex, so it probably makes sense to not take this one out, because otherwise that would create problems if Sergeant Myers has to attack. So it makes more sense to try to take out the one that's in the same hex as Sergeant Myers. So we'll have it fire there. Normally it needs a sixes to hit at range two. It gets a one die penalty, one roll penalty, so it would need sevens or greater to hit. However, Sergeant Hart at grade, range greater than one gets a plus two to his die roll. So he needs fives or better to hit two shots on the armored car. Let's get our fingers crossed again. Hopefully we can take it out. Eight and a 10, excellent shooting for Sergeant uh, Hart. Let's mortars finish it off. The armored car needs fours or less to save it. Fives are greater, and we've ended the battle. Six and a nine, it's over. Yes, nice shooting, Sergeant Myers. The armored car is wiped out. Excellent, and that wipes out the battalion as they're down to four strength points. We have done it, largely in thanks to some amazing shooting by Sergeant Myers, and also Sergeant Hart picking up some critical kills as the battle went along. Let's uh, just give our commanders a chance to finish their attacks this turn, to see if they can pick up some more kills for personal a kind of personal accolades. All right, let's have Sergeant Myers fire at the only range he can fire at left, which is range one. He normally needs sixes to hit. He gets a two die bonus, however, so he needs fours or greater to hit two shots on the armored car. Four and a seven, both hits. Armored car needs a four or less to negate it. Two and a one. Oh, gosh, no effect there. So Sergeant Myers, after dialing in everything, when the pressure's off, I guess maybe he just relaxed a little bit. And his targets, his shooting went a little bit wild. So we have two infantry units left. Sergeant Kelly, we're going to have rush forward and try to take out this half track. He'll incur some stress, but it's kind of worth it, I think. He's not cautious, so he can move in it. He can, he can move an attack. He's going to add one stress for doing this. Against an armored target, he needs an eight to hit. However, his movement penalties cross out for being in the same hex. At range zero, he has a minus one penalty still. So he actually needs nines or greater to hit. However, because he's in the same hex as the half track, he gets three attacks. Nines or greater to hit, the are not with us. Six and a four, both miss. We got one shot left. Come on, Sergeant Kelly. Two. Ah. So Sergeant Kelly picks up another point of stress, giving him three to end the battle with. And we do not get that unit. Now it's up to Sergeant Wagner. Sergeant Wagner is exposed, which means that subsequent shots on his unit, if he doesn't move, uh, would incur a bonus. So that's not a factor. He is suppressed, and suppressed means that if you attack, then you suffer one stress. And so we might as well give it a try. Now, my understanding is, too, that when you get that stress penalty, it happens before the attack, which means that Sergeant Wagner would have five stress, which puts him into the shaken category. But we might as well give it a go. It doesn't really matter in terms of residual stress after this battle. So he's going to go after the armored car. He normally needs sevens to hit. He's in the same hex and has not moved. So he gets a bonus of two to it. So he needs fives or greater to hit. And at range zero, he's plus one. So he needs fours or greater to hit. So it's a pretty good attack. Oh, sorry. No, no. Fives are greater to hit. But because he's shaken, it's a minus one penalty. So he needs sixes or greater to hit. Three shots because we're in the same hex. Nine and a five, we get one hit. See if we get a third one. A two, one hit. Armored car needs a four or less to survive. Seven, excellent. Sergeant Wagner picks up a kill and takes out the half track as our last action in this campaign. That brings us to the end of turn five. The armored battalion, the, 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 the small tank force here, is reduced to less than four points, so we've destroyed it, which will give us the victory points. Let's take a little bit of a look back on how that uh, racks everything up. We'll pull our event card and kind of wrap this one up and then make some final comments on the campaign. Alrighty, let's pick our after battle event card, even though it probably isn't gonna have very much of an impact on it. Second chance, and we look at the bottom one here for after battle, keep this card. Discard to re-roll any one die roll or redraw any damage counter. Oh my goodness, this would have been so helpful to hand to have like way earlier in the campaign, but now at the end we can't really use it. So it doesn't really have any impact on us. I didn't know this kind of a card existed, but that would be a lifesaver for some of our situations. We probably could have kept like Sergeant Zebra alive. We could have kept some of our tanks in action. 
that's a pretty good card to have in hand uh, for future campaigns, but didn't help us this time. Let's take a look at our operational map. We can remove 2A from the map, and that one is gone, leaving really only this massive headquarters unit, which would, I think, I was originally thinking that would have been an epic battle to take on, but uh, we didn't have enough units for that and couldn't get to it anyway, so that one still stays on the board, leaving the Germans at the end of their invasion with their headquarters unit, which is their largest and most dangerous unit. But we would have needed everybody to take this on, and we couldn't get to it anyway. So, uh, all in all, pretty successful. We took out that battalion, got a little bit lucky there, I think, for sure. But uh, let's take a look at how our commanders did. Sergeant Myers, by far the hero of this battle, uh, led us with four kills in this battle. He had four already. Uh, which gives him eight. He did get uh, wounded, and it's also worth noting to take a look here at his tank because it is completely beat up. This is the jumbo. It's got a glancing mark on it, hull damage, machine guns damage, and the gun is damaged. So uh, pretty beat up jumbo there after getting caught in the field advancing across in the face of those armored cars when they came back at us. For stress, Sergeant Myers has won. He would pick up two in the battle, which would give him three, but he is cool so it would leave him at the end of the battle as wounded and with two stress. He would get two more experience points, giving him five, which isn't enough to get the six that he would need to get promoted, so he ends the campaign as a skilled commander. But by far the hero of this battle, it was Sergeant Myers. Not to be outdone by much, however, Sergeant Hart ended up with three kills, including the final coup de grace on the German battalion that gave us a campaign victory here. He ended up with, uh, with the three kills that he got in this battle, he ends up with eight for the campaign as he had five earlier on. For stress, he started the battle with two, would pick up four, two more, giving him four, but he is cool now, so he would end up the campaign with three stress. Not a single shot fired in Sergeant, ha Sergeant Hart in this battle, because we were able to keep the mortars back from the front lines, which is kind of where we want to keep them the whole campaign here. As far as experience points, he gets two more to give him four, still well short of the eight he would need to advance beyond the skilled category, so he ends up the campaign as a skilled commander. Sergeant Wagner was the only infantry unit here to pick up a kill, a tough situation going against armored targets for infantry units, but he did get one half-track at the end, giving him one kill for the battle. That gives him a total of six for the campaign, so pretty good results for an infantry unit here. He had five stress by the end of the battle for moving around after being immobilized and suppressed and stuff like that. It would add two to it, so he would end up with seven stress, pretty stressed out. However, he is cool now, so he ends up the campaign with six stress. This normally would mean that he would be shaken. However, Sergeant Wagner gets two more experience points for being in this battle and for knocking out the battalion. That gives him a total of five, which is exactly what he needs to get a promotion. So he would go beyond the average campaign. This is, again, you know, were the campaign to continue. And he would now be a skilled commander. His stress would be at six. And so as a skilled commander, his margin for withstanding stress is greater. So he would be right on the status of okay. So he would end the, com the campaign as a skilled commander. Six stress, okay, and a total of six kills. So uh, a lot of sixes there for Sergeant Wagner. Sergeant Kelly uh, missed his chance to get a kill there right at the end against the half-track, so he did not pick up a kill in the battle. However, he has one total kill for the campaign, and again, he started out as a recruit commander with a small infantry team, so by far the lowest level of commander and the lowest level of unit that we have. So, uh, admirable, for surviving, admirable just for surviving all the way through is his main job was to absorb attacks from the enemy, and he took quite a few shots early on in this campaign as we started to advance on that first turn. He, however, uh, bravely enough, he had three experience points. He picks up two for the battle, which would give him uh, five experience points, just enough to get promoted. So Sergeant Kelly would go from green to average. So he would get his second promotion of this campaign. He had three stress. He would pick up two more, and that would give him a total of five stress to end the campaign with. He is not cool yet, so he would take all two of those stress points. But still, an admirable and survived campaign for... For Sergeant Kelly, congratulations on his fine work. So let's do a little bit of a campaign wrap-up, and I think it's most appropriate to start with a moment of remembrance to our fallen soldiers and fallen leaders. We had five units destroyed in the campaign. Three of our tanks, an anti-tank team, and then a machine gun team were all wiped out. And then uh, here we have still uh, in the campaign theater, we have two of our fallen campaign uh, commanders. Sergeant Zebra, who was killed on the very last attack against his unit in the campaign, who was also our leader in killing the most, knocking out the most German units with, uh, with 10. 
uh, Sergeant Conksel Jr. was killed in a Stuart as well. He, he is uh, his loss. And then, of course, his father, uh, Sergeant Conksel, who is not shown here, his body has been uh, shipped back to the United States already. But we'd like to thank all our brave leaders for their service, and particularly the ones that, that gave their lives in the cause of this campaign. Let's take a look at our kill leaders over the course of the campaign. Sergeant Zebra, who again was killed on the last attack against him, led our forces with 10 kills over the course of the campaign. In second place uh, was a tie. Sergeant Myers, who picked up four kills in this battle, gets a total of eight, as well as Sergeant Hart with his mortar team uh, ended up with a total of eight kills. Those were our top three commanders. And then here you can see the other commanders in line. We had uh, Sergeant Wagner led our infantry teams with six kills. We had Sergeant Tawanda and Sergeant Custard, two of our armored tank commanders, had four kills each before their tanks were blown up around them. So a lot of good performances. We have uh, most all of our units, except for Sergeant Kongsa, who was killed very early in the first week, uh, was able to pick up uh, kills in the course of the campaign. So outstanding performance by our commanders over the course of the campaign. So here is our final assessment. We had 16 points coming into this final battle. We picked up three for destroying the battalion. That would end us... That would give us a final total of 19 points, which would equate to a great evaluation. So overall, I, I do think that this combination, this invasion scenario, this is the second time I've played this one because it's a shorter campaign. I think the way you get the starting operation points does make it one of the easier uh, kind of objective options you can pick. I think you just get a lot of points and it seems because it's short. Uh, and you get a good amount of weekly SO points. This feels like there's a lot of different campaigns and a lot of different scenarios and objectives you can pick. I think this one may actually be one of the easier ones to play, regardless of the fact that actually the difficulty here on the campaign says standard. So according to the card, the difficulty here is determined by which campaign you pick. But I think these vary as well. So uh, I'll make some final comments now as we wrap up, but uh, you know, happy to get the great evaluation. That was fun. Again, you know, got a lot of different rule interpretations that we made along the way, some mistakes going each way. So I'm not really sure how much of it means in terms of accomplishment, but in terms of story, it was a nice way to end for sure. So I'll make some final comments and then we'll wrap up this campaign. So that brings us to the end of the campaign. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks, uh, 13 episodes. Thanks to everybody who has liked and commented and posted comments on the videos as well. That's uh, the interaction with people who are watching uh, makes it a lot more fun to do. And that's one of the things I enjoy most about creating these. And that's been, uh, that's been a lot of fun over the course of the series to have some uh, new faces in the channel and get to know some more people and, and read their comments and observations as well. And thanks as well for people who have posted rules clarifications or asked about some of the rules clarifications. That's, as help, that's helpful too because it, it helps me as a player get better and that helps the series get better as well. And lastly, thank you to everybody who has volunteered to be a leader. So sorry that we killed a few of you off, but <laughs> stuff happens, you know? So uh, it's obvious I had a lot of fun doing this. I think this was really great to do. Uh, I enjoy the narrative elements the game created. I think there's a lot of strategy under the hood in terms of force composition, in terms of trying to position your forces well on the board. Uh, certainly some luck involved too, right? I mean, our last battle, we got pretty lucky early on and just in terms of being able to knock out those German tanks and stuff. So some luck there and stuff like that. I love the RPG elements with the leaders in terms of your leaders gaining experience you get pretty attached to them as the battles go along so it's kind of painful to lose sergeant zebra at the end there um but yeah i think uh you know kind of looking forward a little bit like that too thank you as well this is the second series we've done on the channel thanks for your patience with some of the technical issues and things like that i think i've had five different sound setups and i'm still not quite exactly happy with the one i've got now so i'm going to kind of keep trying to improve these things and work on them to make them better going forward so along those lines if you do have suggestions on things you saw things you think we could do to make them better uh, i'm all ears i'm looking to try to make these um, kind of as fun and engaging as we can and always trying to tweak kind of the editing some of the graphics we're using music uh, board setup camera angles lighting sound everything like that i still feel like i have a lot of things to learn with these so if you've got a ideas or suggestions in that regard. I am all ears, of course. I think going forward, next up, I'm going to start a new series, uh, and I'd love to hear any thoughts and ideas on things you'd like to see on the channel in regards to uh, tabletop historical gaming and wargaming and things like that. Um, I do want to kind of keep this narrative element a, a piece of it so that we're going to kind of move to a new game and do something like this, probably a little shorter series. And I do have... Um, 
Three other leader games. It won't be a leader game next, but I do have three others. I think I have Zero Leader, U-Boat Leader, and Tiger Leader. So at some point, I think I would like to come back and do another campaign, another series with the leader series. This has been a lot of fun to do. But I'm probably going to shift to a different company, different type of game, of uh, war game for the next one, and, and move forward with that. So I think that's about it. Um, you know, again, if you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. And if you've enjoyed the series as well, too, feel free to you know, tweet it out on social media and share it with other people and things like that. That's a great help to me, a great help to kind of getting more eyeballs on the channel and helping the channel to grow. Thank you for everything. Uh, we'll see you in our next series. Take care, everybody.